To start with understanding Earth, we need to learn some basic laws in science. These laws are from observation and calculations of general phenomena on Earth. They are the thermodynamic laws. The first law is that nothing could be destroyed or created on Earth. All materials, including energy, could neither be destroyed nor created. The second law is energy law, about the transfer of heat and work. Because of the first law, which is called the law of conservation, change of internal energy could be done with enthalpy and entropy. The second law shows the direction of the process and is driven by entropy. It is about the change of free energy for a process. Under constant temperature and pressure, delta G equals to delta H minus T delta S. Under the second law, there is a tendency to achieve maximum randomness until equilibrium is reached. Delta S equal to entropy equals to delta Q divided by T at its molecule disorder. An example here is from higher temperature T1 to T2 with cold, and heat transfer occurs. There must be a delta Q over time, T. There is a natural process driven by the entropy of this system to move from T1 to T2 until equilibrium is reached, causing the entropy of the system to increase for an irreversible process or run direction process and to remain constant for a reversible process, continual exchange of solid. With the concepts of these laws in your mind, let's consider the cases of a closed system and an open system. Systems refer to interactions and relationship in a given boundary. A system could be an ecosystem, an open system has an exchange of matters and energy with its surrounding, whereas a closed system has no exchange. For example, the planet Earth is a simple open system with solar energy coming in and captured by photosynthesis. Carbon fixation, capturing the energy into plant biomass, turning into animal biomass, waste and decayed materials, releasing carbon dioxide back. Here, we have sunlight captured by plants going into this grazing food chain. Can you draw your own flow chart here? We would also have the chemosynthesis pathway from tripworms and mussel clusters down under the ocean over a cold, deep ocean to obtain energy in a detritus food chain, energy trapped underground, released as chemical energy. There's energy transfer in food chains in addition to materials transfer. In the grazing food chains, primary producers use solar energy and capture carbon dioxide to make sugars. The consumers use oxygen to break down the sugars to obtain energy stored as chemical energy. Therefore, the primary consumers are plant-eating herbivores. Secondary consumers are carnivores, animal-eating. Tertiary or top consumers are carnivores or omnivores eating both plants and animals. On the right-hand side are examples of terrestrial food chain on land and marine food chain in the ocean. With phytoplankton or algae, as primary producers, zooplankton as primary consumers. Another type of energy transfer is the detritus food chain. Here starts from bacterial consumption and decomposition of organic matters. Fungi eating bacteria, other invertebrates picking up them as foods 
and further transfer the energy to higher trophic levels of secondary and tertiary consumers. To complete this cycle, there must be decay of organic matters, waste, or pulp. Scavengers also play a significant role in the detritus food chain too. The relationship in this detritus food chain looks chaotic. But this is a complex relationship here. Complex does not mean chaos. It does have a reasonable pattern. With these food chains and energy transfer concepts in your mind, on Earth, we can apply the concept to the air in the atmosphere, water in hydrosphere, land or geology in lithosphere, and living organisms in biosphere as the four major Earth systems. The cryosphere extreme cold environment is largely unexplored. Similar to how energy laws apply to biomes or ecosystem or biosphere, geology affects the biomes, namely biogeography. Natural history, as created by geological background, have profound effects on the biosphere or biomes. For example, plate tectonics could create species separations as of today when compared to the past. What are the biomes on land? We have the tropical rainforest, woodland, grassland and savannas, boreal forest, conifer forest, tundra, and rock alpine on top of the mountains, and the desert. The rainforest, obviously with the highest temperature and annual precipitation, has the highest productivity. The tropical rainforests are the most complex ecosystem structurally and biologically. The desert has the lowest productivity. What are the biomes in the water? There would be marine coast environment in the continental shelf, coral reef, oceanic or pelagic, that means a migratory system, freshwater and wetlands such as swamps and marshes, etc. Comparing the major ecosystem on Earth, the relative biomass accumulation is shown in this diagram. As we can see, both open oceans and deserts have the lowest biomass per area, and rainforests and coral reefs have the highest. Could you explain why? Intensive agriculture areas are also high too. The biomes we have ecosystems, habitats, niches, supporting populations of different organisms. For these biomes or niches, we study the productivity, diversity, resilience, complexity, structure, selective pressure, and special keystone species. You may like to study more of this in your ecology course, and we won't go any further from here. There are also dynamic changes within systems. Species are formed in the biosphere. Each species are interacting with each other. We play predator or predator prey relationship. The wealth of biodiversity could be created by complex geographical reason, making species more diversifying. These species evolve too. We have at least six kingdoms of bacteria, archaea, protista, plant, fungi, and animals, each also trying to achieve its greatest randomness. There are also succession going on from pioneer community to climax community over time. Keep changing from a simple or pioneer stage to a complex and harmony stage. After human intervention, human beings also introduce species by making new hybrids or even genetically modified organisms. Thank you for watching this video. 
The next one, we shall look into chemical or material cycles on Earth.